from this computer. Hold on. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Circle K during COVID-19 webinar. Um, so for those of you who are attending, um, essentially what we'll be doing is kind of rehashing the same things that um, we went over in the first edition of the webinar during Spring Training Conference, um, except, except now we are going to be going into more depth with it now that we've learned a little more and have had a little more experience with everything. Um, so as a quick introduction, my name is Andy Nguyen. I'm a fourth year psychology major with a law society minor. Uh, I go to UC Riverside and I'm the current district md &E chair. <laughs> my name is Olivia Chang and I'm going to my fifth year as a graphic design major with a public relations minor and I currently serve as the club president for Cal State Long Beach. All right, cool. And then uh, we just had everyone do <laughs> the icebreaker. <laughs> um, so we'll start with breakout room one, and then we'll just kind of go down the list. Um, the last one being 13. So um, group one, if you want to go ahead and share your, your drawing, feel free to unmute and show, show the class. I think um, you have to stop sharing. <clears throat> okay, yes. Yeah. Hello, I am Mix Rapko here on behalf of group one. I will share. <laughs> this is ours. As you can see, it has its flagella, it has cilia, we even gave it some little friends. Yes, best one. Okay, group two. Okay, yeah, so long, sorry. Uh, 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 wow, I did not know what breakout room I was. Nested. Okay, so I'm gonna give some preface. Our drawing was it's very, very simple. So give me one second. Uh, wow, computers, wow, content. Okay, so it's a very simple drawing, you know. I, I imagine it as like <laughs> the, the evil coronavirus which ravaged, you know, basically the world. So yeah, that's basically our drawing, so yes. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, group three. That's a group with um, Sween, Jaya, Hillary, Janice, Mosa, and Vanessa. Talk. Okay, wait, um, I have it. So this is our bacteria. Um, we drew this in like 30 seconds because we didn't, we forgot what a bacteria looks like. But, um, you know, we thought the red added a little, um, a little something to it. So yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <clears throat> All right, and then group four um, is Brandon, Eric, Grace, Jaslyn, Lil Lila, and Lauren. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we didn't have time to like finish our drawing, but <laughs> we were just uh, we were just drew like a circle and like and like specks coming out of it and a smiley face and yeah it's kind of horrible but you did it in like a minute <laughs> it's okay art is art <laughs> love that um group five is brandon brian jamie kat miyu renz and samantha okay before before that does anyone from our group have the pictures Oh yeah, uh, I do. I don't know who to send it to. Um, I sent the cat, but uh, hold on. Let me see. Okay, no worries. We will come back to group five in a hot minute. Um, so group six um, is Aaron, Brian, Joey, Lenore, Rachel, and Jin Yi. I am so sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> I don't think they have the photo. <laughs> That is okay, you can verbally describe it to us. <laughs> Tell us about its contours and everything. 
Okay, wait, I might be able to do this. Hold on. Uh oh. Oh, this could be really embarrassing. <laughs> oh, we get it. Okay, we're good. Okay, here we go. This is Miss Rona. Oh. Um, <laughs> she's beautiful. I don't know what to tell you. Um, she's an ABB and we love her. <laughs> that is all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, cool. So we'll backtrack to group five. Um, so group five, are you ready to share? I think I sent in my screenshot to Brian. I hope it's the right. I hope it's the right, Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian Tran. Brian Tran. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where was it oh. again? Sorry. Oh, I sent it. Oh, awkward. Okay. Um, let me see. Hold on. Uh, let me check. I could probably just send it over um, Facebook. Let me see. It's okay. We'll come back to group five in a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. It's all good. All right. Group seven. That's Alex, Alyssa, Diana, Jonathan, Joshua, and Kyle. Oh, oh. <laughs> She's skinny. This this is our bacteria. I don't know if anyone's actually know what bacteria looks like. We're thinking of like the Mucinex Mucin <laughs> commercial. <laughs> You know, she kind of, she kind of shy, but she's also kind of angry. So, yeah, Mukinex. Skinny. Cool. Thank you for sharing. And then Group Eight um is Alfred, Amy, Giselle, Jane, Michelle, and Steve. All right. I'm not gonna share the screen on behalf of Group Eight. So this is what I drew according to my group members. I don't know what, it's look, what it looks like, but yes, this is the bacteria that we discussed about. <laughs> cool, love it. <clears throat> awesome. And then group nine, um, we have Arrow, Emily, Justin, Luck, um, Karishma, Kim, Yi, Kit, and Olivia. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so as you can tell from the top, this is our Asian best boy. He got his taro boba right here and the thick lashes. He got his heart right here. He got some thick thighs. He's got some spiky thingies on his spine. And uh, he's also a teacher. He's real educated. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Amazing. True art. <laughs> All right, and then group five. I almost forgot about you guys. Are you finally ready? Yes, we're ready. Awesome. Go for it. Okay, I don't know if you can see closely, but we have a bacteria that is jamming. And it's got music, little shoes. Its home is a nose. But it loves to listen to AirPods while being angry. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> All right, group 10, that's Alex, um, Angelina, Dan, Lillian, McKenna, and Teddy. Whoever has the picture. Yes. Hi everyone, uh, so uh, we drew uh, Salmonella. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, but we drew salmonella because who doesn't want to have salmonella as part of their well-balanced diet, so. <laughs> <clears throat> we love salmonella. Cool. Uh, group 11, that's Ethan, Maddie, uh, Michelle, Rebecca, Sangeetha, and Vanessa. Okay, I have the honor of showing it. Um, oh, frick, I don't know how to screenshot what I've got covered, but this is our bacteria band, also known as the Bacteria Street Boys, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, group 12, that's Joshua, Justin, Fong, uh, Kian, Kylie, Ricky, and Vincent. Okay, I guess I'm explaining um, because I had to draw for part of it. Um, let me share my screen. Oof. 
One second, sorry. Okay, so I'm sorry if you guys can't see it that well. <laughs> I tried my best, kids. So um, we, oh, there we go. So we decided to go with a bunch of green blobs that you can't see that well. My apologies. Um, there was a request for League of Legends to be put in. And then at one point, um, it got erased somewhere, but uh, I drew a hat on top just to add some decorative decor. Um, but it was not in this screenshot. So that is our bacteria for you. Cool. And then the last group, uh, we have Gabby, Justin Linder, uh, Tim, Elizabeth, and that's it. Anyone from group 13? Took no screenshot. I guess it's I can okay. try to I can try to cool. share one second. Mm. Okay, can you guys see him? Yes. Wait. Cool. Okay, so his name is Friendly Bacteria, and you know, he's got a plasmid to hold all those genes, and you know, he's great. It's great. Great. Cool. Thank you everyone for sharing and for participating. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be continuing on with the rest of the webinar. Um, let me share my screen again really quick. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so the next thing we'll be talking about is recruitment and outreach. Um, so starting off, we'll be talking about interclubbing and Olivia. Yeah, so <laughs> interclubbing. Um, for recruitment, I'll make sure to um, collaborating with other clubs across the district. Um, oh, damn, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so, so for interclubbing, uh, collaborating with clubs across the district is a really good um, opportunity for you guys to meet other people outside of your home club. Um, you could have joint services, socials, webinars, even joint meetings. Um, and for example, Long Beach has been having kickbacks where we combine all three tenants of service leadership and fellowship. And I know PCC has been having service socials um, where they have like service tabletop and then afterwards they have like a fun activity together. Um, and another way, another like good thing about interclubbing is that you're able to like, you know, visit other clubs webinars and meetings to get ideas and like learn from each other so I feel like clubs are so used to following like a set schedule or like agenda based on like how their clubs have been doing it in past years um, so like visiting other clubs like meetings and stuff really gives you a different perspective on how other clubs run their events um, I think especially now like really take advantage of how often everyone is like using an online platform because normally it wouldn't be as easy to do an interclub with like another division such as like a NorCal club or like SoCal club or even like Nevada and Hawaii. Yeah and <clears throat> um, kind of continuing on like the idea of like recruitment and retention um, recruitment and outreach I know like this past quarter recruitment was something that was really difficult for a lot of clubs um, just because like you know you don't get the opportunity to table in person um, and there are ways around that um, and the primary way is through social media. Uh, social media is a very powerful tool. And I will tell you that um, there's a lot of things you can do with it outside of just, you know, having a bunch of like posts made every like other day or something like that. Um, but <clears throat> kind of getting started with the topic of Facebook and Instagram. Um, one of the most important things with having a social media platform is being able to maintain consistent posts and activity, um, whether it be having your, uh, your events, like scheduled to be posted on a certain day, a certain time, um, or even just like having people like um, constantly like comment on posts and tag people and having a lot of engagement on those. Uh, and then also there's personal outreach. So um, privately messaging people or DMing as they say, um, <laughs> so that you can get people to come out. And sometimes people just need a little bit of uh, that extra push to get them to attend an event. And um, of course, the other thing is advertising events on personal accounts. Um, your network is um, not only just people that you meet in Circle K, but um, people that you've met in classes that you might follow, um, things like that. And so uh, I would say that um, getting your board members or even getting your general members to, to advertise um, you know, any upcoming events that you might, your club might be having is something that is very effective um, on their personal account as well. Uh, you can also have 
um, club emailing lists. Uh, so I know a lot of clubs have like emailing lists where they just kind of like do event recaps and talk about like, oh, like this is what we have coming up and um, this is what we did in the past. But um, aside from that, you can also do like welcome emails where uh, you can send emails out to your new members and be like, hello, um, thank you for joining. These are some resources that you can use. These are this is like a general rundown on what we do in this organization. Um, really just figuring out a way to like make them feel comfortable, make them feel welcomed. Um, you can also send out emails to people who have been a little bit inactive for a while or even like just a personal message or something. Um, that way, you know, they know that you care about them and that you miss them. Uh, and in terms of campus resources, uh, you can always contact professors to speak about your club or ask them to plug it in at like the end of like a, uh, a lecture. And um, I know like some, pro some professors like have their lectures like pre-recorded and stuff, but um, I think like Canvas and Blackboard, like you can, make announcements. Uh, so utilize those to the best of your advantage. Um, and of course, like if you do decide to like plug in your club to like your classes and stuff, please ask for permission first. Um, it's inc incredibly important that you ask the professor for permission if you're gonna advertise something like that. Um, <clears throat> and of course, reach out to other organizations on campus to collaborate on online events. Um, having, uh, sorry, being able to interclub with other Circle K clubs is great too, but um, remember that you wanna build a presence, you wanna build um, your club's name on your campus as well so that uh, other students know about what opportunities you're providing versus other clubs. And um, I'm not saying that you can steal members, but um, it's definitely a great way to get more people interested. Uh, and the next thing will be about involvement and retention. Yeah, so for retention, you really have to think about like what you want your members to be getting out of their dues, especially since now um, that everything's going to be online. I know for Long Beach, like our school is going to be online. So we really have to like rethink um, how our fall semester is going to be. Um, but to start, just understanding what your members want and what you're providing will help plan activities that are catered towards the interests of your club. So having feedback forms, surveys, personal outreach, um, especially like right now, the whole idea of quarantine and not having like in-person events is still pretty new to CKI. So make sure to cater these feedback forms to what your club might need help on. Um, as Andy said before, social media is like super important right now. So figuring out like what platforms members um, use the most might be like a good survey to have. Um, and also like online activities members might want to see. Um, and I think it's always good in the, at the end of the day to always like reflect back on your club progress. I like looking at the MRFs to just look at the trends, um, but also like, you know, it's always good to have like discussions with your board on like what events went well and what could have been improved. Um, also, this will like also serve as data for like next year's board, but it's always good like for your own club um, to see how you could constantly improve. Yeah, and just kind of building on that, <clears throat> um, when it comes to like feedback forms and surveys and stuff, um, you always want to try to make them as like simple as possible. Um, you know, don't expect people to fill out a form that's like basically like asking them to write an essay. Um, my recommendation is always like having those kind of feedback forms or surveys or whatever um, in a Likert scale kind of format where it's like on a scale of like one to 10 or one to five, like how do you feel about this event that we just had? Um, do you think this is an area improvement that we can make? Things like that. Um, and of course, uh, if you guys have any like questions about so social media and stuff, um, of course you can like contact us. But I also highly recommend contacting CNM um, Communications and Marketing Committee. Uh, they that's what they do. So uh, <laughs> next <clears throat> we'll be talking about interclubbing again. Um, so for me, I kind of view interclubbing in two aspects. So one is the whole like recruitment and outreach thing, reaching out to other clubs and um, seeing what they're doing and learning from them. But there's also another side to it where um, you kind of have to take into consideration that. You know, if you're doing a little too much interclubbing with, um, you know, with other schools, then you might, you kind of run into the risk of like, not being able to focus on your own members and your own membership and getting them to come back and um, be involved with your club because some of them might be too intimidated by, um, you know, the amount of members from other clubs. And so <clears throat> you really want to make sure that you're setting priority for your own general members at events, um, even at general meetings too, right? Um, you know, general meetings is General meetings are essentially like your hub of information um, and getting out what you need to to your body of membership. And if you know they're not attending those events because they're too intimidated or too afraid to because like 
there's so many people from like other schools. Um, that's something that you might want to take into consideration and um, you know talk with your board and figure out like what kind of balance you want to have with the uh, the inner clubbing versus um, home club focused events. I know like uh, with everything kind of moving online, like a lot of schools have made like Discord, um, I think their channels. Uh, and I know some, some clubs have also like have made it so that, you know, other members from other clubs can join their Discord channels. But um, I know there's some people that have made it so that they have like home club specific channels too. Um, so that's something that you can do. Those are some suggestions. But overall, I would really emphasize trying to find a focus um, on your home club while um, still trying to reach out to other people. And, uh, you know, everything's about finding balance. Yeah, so. And, uh, huh? Nope, nope, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so another way, um, another thing to think about for retention is how you're hosting events. So make sure that you're diversifying what events you're hosting. I know it's especially hard right now. Um, it's like with COVID-19 online events, like it's very limited, um, but try to avoid doing the same like tabletop every week. Um, try to make like make sure that you have like a balance of not only service, but leadership and fellowship events as well. Um, and Zoom burnout is pretty real. So try utilizing other communication platforms such as Discord um, and make sure to take breaks and don't feel obligated to attend every single event. Um, but also stay active as much as you can. Um, but we also like, it's super easy for us to like burn out super quick, especially right now with all the interclubbing. Um, so as Andy was mentioning before, we really want to emphasize, although like in the beginning, we, <laughs> we talked, we said good things about interclubbing, we really want to emphasize like focusing on your home club. And um, in the end, like you are like, everything is about like, you know, your own home club. <clears throat> yeah. And um, something else to keep in mind too is like interclubbing you can kind of view it as like a double-edged sword where it's like you know on one end like you're able to reach out and learn a lot from other people um, and get other people involved with your events too but on the other side of that sword you have to kind of take in, into consideration how that might harm your your general membership and your home club in the end um, so you know everything's about finding balance gotta gotta be a Libra every once in a while you know <laughs> um, Next is fundraising. And so uh, fundraising has been a pretty big thing um, in terms of like <laughs> there being some difficulties with it. Um, I know like you know, this is a very hard time financially and uh, with people not being able to work and everything like that. And so um, raising funds in quarantine can be kind of difficult, um, but these are some ideas and some suggestions that um, we've provided for uh, your club to be able to do. Uh, so things are like bingo cards. A lot of clubs have been doing like bingo card things on uh, their Instagram account where they like have people donate and they tag them, stuff like that. Um, you can do dares, you can do online game tournaments, um, happy sad change, sharing meetings, so it's a really good one as well. <clears throat> and um, one of the other things I really wanna emphasize with uh, raising funds in quarantine is um, with charities, don't be afraid to raise funds for other charities. Like it's great, it's great and it's important to raise funds for you know, our DFIs and stuff, but um, you know, there are, are a non-exhaustive list of charities and pe people that you can support. Um, and um, I've taken the liberty to list a couple of ones that I think that are very important for um, our time right now. And these are some active fundraisers for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I think some of these might have actually closed by now, but um, these are ones that I found really quickly. Um, just kind of scrolling through Instagram and if you need more that you can find, um, it's definitely very accessible on Instagram, especially Twitter, of course, is also very, um, you know, they're, they're popping off with all the information and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing too, uh, that I kind of forgot to mention is with raising funds in quarantine, uh, you know, just have the general expectation that you're not going to be able to um, raise as much as you made during like a normal year, um, just because, you know, people are, they're going through it. Financially, it's a hard time, um, but do your best and remember to have fun with it too. That's the best part of fundraising. And next is Kona's family. So Olivia will talk. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about adult relations. So one thing you could do is 
um, train your sponsoring Kiwanis Club on how to use Zoom if necessary. So, you know, ask if they need help with using Zoom because a lot of like Kiwanis Clubs are also using Zoom as like a online meeting platform. Um, so personally for Long Beach, uh, I created a Kiwanis like Zoom guide for them. Um, if you guys wanted to take a look at it, you guys could probably like use it for your um, Kiwanis Clubs as well. Um, but it's basically just like basic functions of Zoom, um, how to mute people, <laughs> how to share your screen and like stop sharing, stuff like that. Um, and another way to keep in contact with them is, you know, via like weekly phone calls, emails um, to provide updates on what your club has been doing. So just keeping them in the loop. Um, and we've also been attending our like Kiwanis Club's like weekly meetings and we've been giving updates there. Um, and we've also like been collaborating on a few like service projects with our Kiwanis. So like they've also been pretty helpful in like providing like service for us. Yeah, and then um, this presentation will be uploaded um, to the event page and I, I think the website eventually. Um, so don't fret too much for like writing down the links to everything, um, it will be provided. So yeah. Uh, next is youth relations. Um, so working with our youth relations is always kind of like a sticky situation. Um, and uh, I generally am not the most well-versed person in this, but I do know that youth protection guidelines are still in order. Um, they are meant to protect those who are under 18. And so um, just be a little wary when you're interacting with them. You don't want to get in trouble for that kind of stuff. And um, I believe that you can always just contact me um, if you need more specific information on this. And um, in the meantime, try to get in contact with lieutenant governors um, or have your Qantas family chairs, uh, get in contact with your local um, uh, key clubs and key wins to attend their DCMs or their events um, whenever you are invited. Um, and if possible, um, I recommend acting as a mentor for those graduating high school. Um, one of the things that I loved doing during my term as lieutenant governor was being like a mentor for them, kind of telling them like the ropes of like college and like the application process and things like that. And um, it's kind of fun. Uh, you get a lot of questions and stuff and that's like pretty normal, but it is a confusing process and being able to guide them through all of that um, is kind of like the rewarding process. And uh, if, if possible, if you know, you've, you know anyone that's graduating um, high school, then I would say to reach out to them and see what would happen. But just be careful with some of the youth protection guidelines. Again, um, I would ask me, you, our Kiwanis Family Foundation share about that. Yeah. Especially for recruitment, like right now, like the only like we really have to rely on like getting the key club members as well as in the transfers um, are like the two biggest, um, I guess, resources or sources of members that we would get into our clubs. Yep. <clears throat> and next is service. Uh, so, Olivia. Okay. Um, so we... Basically, in the workshop before um, held at STC, you guys could find it on YouTube. Um, but we also like went over like the main like some main like uh, service projects, leadership um, ideas, and like um, what is it fellowship ideas. So like for this workshop, it's mo mostly like um, we have less focus on that and more like on the other topics. Um, but just for like some service ideas we had are literacy cards, bird feeders, DIY masks. Um, you can volunteer for call centers and you could create like care kits for the homeless. Um, these are all like simple like tabletops you can do from home. Um, and also another thing is like, you know, having like alternate activities to give options to members who might not have like the materials on hand. Um, so like you could have like digital ideas. So I think we had like free rice, um, origami, uh, stuff like that. Um, and recently, like our club has been doing, like uh, we've been signing petitions and um, sending emails to for the BLM movement. So that's something you could do as an alternate activity. Um, another other service ideas is reaching out to local homeless shelters, food banks, etc., to see what you can help them with. Um, so many organizations are still looking for physical volunteers. Um, it might not be as ideal as like a club to have like. Um, multiple people go out to service, but it's also like, it's a good opportunity um, just to ha like have it for your members, especially like um, for community colleges or like Cal States, a lot of like members actually live near school. So like they're still able to like go out and help. 
Um, and just remember to practice government uh, mandated distancing rules. So um, while also like serving the community at the same time. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, of course, obviously this is a workshop about like it's okay during COVID-19 and um, you know, if you are able to volunteer in person, um, that's great. But I try to limit the amount of people we have going. Um, make sure they're, pra they're practicing social distancing rules, six feet apart, um, wearing masks, um, regardless of that county's rules regarding things like masks and, you know, other things related to um, COVID-19. It is very much a real thing. Um, and protect your members. Their health and their safety matters first, um, above all else. So. Yeah. If you do choose to, then be careful. Yeah. And like you might not want to like advertise this event or like have an in-person event because you feel like not many members are going to go out. But I think, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> but also like, um, I think it's good to just like have it. Um, and they're honestly like appreciative, like even just have like one or two members go out. Um, they're really like looking for volunteers. So. All right, so next we're gonna be doing an FAQ. So basically how this is gonna work is I'm gonna be asking the questions and um, I kinda wanna see what your guys' thoughts are and um, what are some suggestions that you have. Obviously we have our answers to these, um, but since we're in, we're in a room of 100 people, let's try to get as many thoughts as we can going. So um, if you have anything to say, feel free to mention it in the chat um, or raise your hand and I will call on you. So the first question is, how do I get my members involved in service with everything shifting online? And if you don't know how to raise your hand, you can go to the participants um, feature and then there should be a raise hand feature at the bottom. Gabby. Hi, so I'm Gabby from CSU Fresno and I found out about this Central Valley website. It has volunteer opportunities. And um, right now um, our president, he's suggesting that we do remote volunteering. And one of the opportunities that I found on that website was um, as a meal delivery driver for senior citizens. So, um, so far I pick up the meals um, from a senior organization and I just deliver them to people in my community. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else have anything to share for this question? We're doing the first question on the slide. All you service chairs, where you at? Don't be shy. Audrey Halim. All right, you called out the service chairs, so you know, I, I just gotta eat myself out there. Um, something that I've noticed to make service a little bit more engaging is literally to ask questions. Um, if you guys ever notice, like when you're doing service events and no one says anything, it's, the, it's like an awkward dead silence in the air for two hours. It's very boring. Uh, just try to get to know the people that you're working with and make it a little bit more fun. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, so um, our response to this was um, personal outreach, letting your members know that your club is still active and sending out a personal invitation. Um, so both Gabby and Audrey gave some pretty great suggestions about um, how to keep it um, engaging and how to um, kind of spice things up with like what you're doing. Uh, and I think those are great suggestions. And um, of course, if you're having trouble getting members to attend your services, again, personal outreach, um, try revisiting like your marketing techniques as well. Um, that's probably gonna be something that's gonna be relevant. Uh, the next question is, um, how do you handle tabletop resource limitations um, preventing participation? So essentially like, um, yeah, I think those, yeah. <laughs> anyone like to share? <laughs> if anyone needs, um, Clarification, let me know. It's basically just like your general member is not having like the resources that um, the tabletop requires. So like if you need like color pencils or like um, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah, shirts, Justin ran out of shirts. Yeah, for example, let's say like you're hosting like your fifth um, dog toy making thing and your members are running out of shirts to donate to make dog toys. What do you do? <laughs> oh. oh. 
All right, since it didn't really seem like somebody who wanted to participate for this one, um, our response for this one was, if possible, um, you can have designated people create um, and deliver tabletop kits to your members. Um, and what we mean by that is like essentially like having designated like board member to um, collecting all the materials that you need for um, a particular like service event and just dropping it off at the doorsteps of like your members. Um, of course, if that's possible. Uh, I know that distance is something that is a challenge for a lot of clubs. Um, you know, we all come from different, literal different walks of life. Um, and obviously a lot of us are at home and not where our schools are. Um, however, you can always try to arrange like, I guess like subunits for your club to accommodate um, distance. And what I mean by that is like having like a group of NorCal members for your club, um, kind of collaborating, working together, a group of um, Central Valley people, uh, people from Southern California and um, Southern Nevada, Hawaii, um, just having people kind of like collaborate, work together, um, different neighborhoods, things like that, if that makes sense. All right, the next question is, doing service online can feel kind of awkward. How do we create a more comfortable atmosphere? So Audrey actually, uh, Audrey actually already kind of answered this question. Um, and so basically what you can do is prepare like a list of icebreaker questions, um, play some music, try to find as many like ways to engage people as possible. Um, you can play like a small game or something while you're doing service. Um, obviously not like one that requires you to like quote unquote multitask, um, but do like those talking games where you're like asking questions to each other and um, you know, just recognize that silence is okay every once in a while. Um, so don't get like too nervous if people are like super focused or anything. Um, we love comfortable silence. Um, and then the last question I had for you guys was, uh, how do I know if my members are actually doing service and not something else like at the service event? And then again, feel free to raise your hand and participate as well. I think Audrey already answered, so I'm gonna have Justin go first. I would just privately message them and ask them if they did service or during the event, you can just ask them if they're here to just ch chill and talk or if they're actually doing service or if they're gonna be doing an alternate activity that can be counted as service. Yeah, awesome. Then Audrey? I ask people to email with me what they don't like stuff. Um, so if we're doing cards, there's no real way for me to like check their screens and I'm not gonna be weird about it. So if they just send me um, an email, then it's easy for me to mass collect everything and then send it all to one organization. So it keeps things organized and like kind of lessens pressure on myself to constantly have to ask them. Yeah, so those are great suggestions. Um, <laughs> the one thing that I just kind of put on there was um, having to turn on the camera and sh <laughs> show them progress every once in a while. Don't be shy, show yourself. Um, and that way also like it kind of like makes it so that it's a little less awkward. You're not just talking to screen, stuff like that. Um, and you don't, you don't have to like be super blunt about it. Be like, hey, show me what you're working on. Um, just kind of be like, hey, like you guys good? Like do you need anything? How, how many have you made? Just things like that. Um, and yeah, so those are great suggestions. Um, next thing we'll be talking about is leadership. Yeah, so leadership workshops. Um, so I think board training, like right now, really utilize summer to build a foundation and start educating your board members. Um, for example, like some ideas I had in mind were like event planning, recruitment and retention, especially as like fall gets closer, um, and then leading a club committee. Um, as well as like club education, like a lot of like newer members who join in the spring um, don't really know what CKI is all about. So you could have a CKI 101 workshop um, as well as um, recently it's a new term. So there's like a new surf, a new DFI, DSI. Uh, so you could have a surf workshop, a DFI, DSI workshop, or even an MRP workshop. Um, and then next member hosted workshops. Um, really like this is like the opportunity to give your general members a chance to host workshops. So help them plan their own workshops on the club level. Um, you have your plan your own workshop program, uh, which helps promote like involvement for general members and helps like develop their leadership skills. Um, and it really lets them like, you know, do a workshop on like whatever like their interest is. 
um, and make sure at the end of the day like to diversify the types of workshops being hosted. Um, so really find a balance between like professional skill workshops, CKI workshops, and like casual workshops. An example is time management time management 101 versus like bullet journaling 101. <clears throat> Yeah, and the next thing we'll be talking about is board and general meetings. Um, and so with this, I know that like uh, a lot of meetings can feel kind of like, kind of, I guess like kind of stale or like kind of like pointless, like let's say like during the summer where there aren't as many events. Um, and so my suggestion is to kind of rethink the structure of your events, um, of your general meetings and board meetings. Um, so let's say like you don't have enough events, consider having your meetings to just kind of like briefly talk about the events that you do have um, and throw in activities to tackle each tenant, um, whether it be like a workshop, a tabletop service, or a really lengthy icebreaker. Um, the really important thing with board and general meetings right now is engagement and having things for people to do. Um, and if you're having trouble getting members to attend meetings um, or there's a lack of engagement in board meetings especially, um, I would recommend having discussion-based meetings um, where you work together as a board to plan ideas and tackle club-related issues. Um, and remember that you're all there to work together, not just individually. Um, one of the things that I'm doing with my own committee is that um, one week we'll just kind of go over assignments that we need to do, um, not really going too in depth with it, but I leave it off for them to kind of um, sit on, think about, and work on on their own. Um, and then the next week we just kind of follow up and do um, a discussion-based meeting where uh, we really collaborate on everyone's assignments and make sure that everything's really fleshed out and um, we're really collaborating as much as we can. And that's something that you can bring back to your clubs as well. Um, and we, again, we just kind of do it like on a, I guess like by the basis where it's like switching. So one week is um, assignments, the other is discussion and it just kind of repeats like that. And the next thing is fellowship. Yeah, so fellowship is pretty straightforward. Um, so I think a lot of you guys are already doing this now. Um, so make sure that you're understanding the interests of your members. So whether like, you know, they really like gaming, you could do Jackbox, League, Animal Crossing. Um, if they really want to like bond, you could do like, I think Andy has his game, <laughs> uh, get to know me games, like we're not really strangers. Um, and just have like deep talks, um, stuff like that. Or you could have work study sessions. I know a lot of people are in like summer classes right now. Um, and online panel. I'm not really sure what this is. Um, but it's just like a panel to get to know your members. <laughs> or yes. I know long <laughs> with, have like, like a senior graduating senior panel to get to know like our graduating seniors. Um, you want to expand on that? Yeah, so like with the online plan um, panels, it literally is like basically what Olivia just said with like um, getting to know like your graduating seniors, um, getting to know your board members, asking them questions, engaging with them. Um, they can be panels like literally anything. Like you can have like a an array of people talking about, let's say like, um, their favorite games or whatever, um, things like that. Yeah, so it's kind of like a workshop, but with more people. Um, uh, and then family and mentorship system, you could have like a pen pal system, uh, like Long Beach, we're having temporary uh, mentorship and family systems. Um, and you can like create challenges for mentorship pairings and families to participate in. Uh, I know Metro's doing the union buddy system. Um, and yeah, I think also for like online socials, like um, by like understanding the interests of your members and really like, um, what is it called? Uh, focusing like, um, I think, um, okay, so. So recently like Long Beach, we're also like planning to have more like movie nights and discussions based, related back to like black culture and like the BLM movement. Um, so like you can really like, um, adapt your like socials to like you know the current issues going on or like um yeah the in the interest the current interests that are going on right now um yeah yeah <clears throat> and then we're coming close to the end of this workshop and so um one of the things i really want to talk about was mental health and productivity um so being a psychology major um i studied mental health and um, all that jazz and um you know, during times of crisis, it can be really difficult to take care of ourselves and really focus on ourselves as well. Um, but it is important to take a breath, you know, focus on ourselves and what we need to do um, and not just what others need us to do. Um, and so some of my suggestions um, are kind of just kind of listed out. Uh, and the first thing is maintaining calendars and daily schedules and tasks, um, task lists. And what I mean by that is like, if you don't already, um, 
in terms of time management, I highly, highly recommend just being able to maintain a calendar so that you can visualize like what you need to do and when. Um, and that way you can also visualize um, how well you're able to space out an assignment. Um, so you're not just cramming it all in the night before. Um, we always talk about procrastinating and um, whatnot, <laughs> but um, procrastinating hurts us. Um, and we should probably try our best not to do it. Um, and so time management is an essential key um, to maintaining good mental health as well. Um, and of course, pr prioritizing your tasks and responsibilities. Um, you know, being college students, we have a lot on our hands. We have school, some of us have work, some of us have to um, take care of our family. We have um, a whole list of things. And, um, you know, when it comes down to it, you kind of need to prioritize, prioritize like what is important in your life and what things you need to do versus things that um, you can kind of leave off for a little bit later um, after you've finished um, something else. And the other thing is take breaks from social media. Um, there are a lot of studies that have been done that have shown that um, people who spend more time on social media um, are more likely to, um, what's the word? <laughs> people who spend more time on social media um, are more likely to experience loneliness. Um, and you know, that's not saying that like, you have to obliterate social media. Um, trust me, I am on social media like 24 seven. Um, but just shut off your phone every once in a while. Just kind of like take a bath, sit there, relax. Um, put your phone off, shut it off. Just don't even think about it. Don't talk about it, anything. Um, just stuff like that. And um, with that being said, it's okay to remove yourself from the task at hand to focus on yourself for a little bit. Um, I know that as leaders, um, a lot of us, if not all of us, probably feel like we have to take on everything ourselves and get it done as fast as possible and we just don't ask for help and all that jazz. I know y'all, I've been there, I'm looking at you. Um, it's okay to ask for help and it's so much easier said than done. Um, but just really, <laughs> just really like forcing yourself to like ask your board members for support and um, for assistance wherever you might need it. Um, you know, in the long run, it does really, really help. And th again, there are a lot of studies that have been done that have shown that people who have stronger support systems um, are less likely to experience stress and in the long run, live longer lives. Um, and some smaller things, um, I like to practice like breathing techniques. Um, I don't remember the specifics of it, but there's like apps where you can like download it and it'll tell you like, take a really deep breath in and then exhale and just hold it. Um, and I think for me, like, in times where like I've been really really stressed um, or like I'm just really going through it. <laughs> um, breathing techniques always help me like just calm down, collect my thoughts and um, you know return to a proper state where I can um, respond to someone or uh, get back to the task at hand. And uh, something else I like to do is just kind of like count my blessings and things I'm really grateful for. Um, they don't have to be like big things like oh I'm grateful for like getting a 4.0 uh, which definitely is not me trust <laughs> um but they can be really small things just as like i'm grateful for the friends who i'm able to talk to today i'm grateful for um the the roof over my head i'm grateful for a lot of different things um and yeah someone su suggested just now like having a gratefulness journal is um extremely helpful as well and i already mentioned support systems um support systems come in many different forms they can be um in the form of family they can be in the form of close friends um, they can be your coworkers, really just people that you feel like you can really depend on um, <laughs> are really great ways or people that you can, people that you can rely on are going to help you get through tough times. And there's a lot of studies that have been shown. If you need the proof, then I can share as much as I can with you. Um, but yeah, and these are just some resources I have. Um, this being the first district wide webinar. Um, I want everyone to know that anyone can host a webinar. All you need is an idea. Um, and my committee will be working with you to really flesh out everything you need to talk about and things like that. Um, we're trying our best to make this as easy and as um, not intimidating as possible. I don't know what the word is, um, but as, as approachable as possible. There you go. Um, and really all you need to do is fill out this form um, and just kind of give us like, things that you're interested in, what you want to talk about, what you want to share with the rest of the district. 
Um, it can really be anything. I'm literally open to any idea, even if it's as ridiculous as calculus 1B or something. I don't know. Um, although that might not happen. Please don't suggest that. <laughs> um, and the other resource I have is for mental health and COVID-19. Um, so obviously I'm not a licensed therapist or um, a psychologist with a PhD. Um, and so I linked some resources um, that you can utilize with um, from the Global Healthy Living Foundation. Um, and I highly implore all of you to check it out. Um, and yeah, so now I, I open the floor for any questions. Um, yeah, feel free to raise your hand or ask in the chat. Any questions at all about service, fellowship, leadership, retention, recruitment, involvement? See, <laughs> Are there questions in the chat? Um, hold on. I know I had, I think there was a question somewhere. Let me, let me find it. Are there any questions? I'm trying to check as much as I can. <laughs> Uh, so question, uh, so from a general member standpoint, how do you get your club to be active? Um, Olivia, do you have anything to say for this one? I'm, um... I would say like, uh, if you can talk to your board, um, see like what they're doing, what they're working on. And if the issue is just like member is not really attending events, um, then I would say, like, maybe as a general member, just reaching out to other people and, like, seeing, like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, got plans this weekend? <laughs> um, and then ask them, like, hey, if you're free, then, you know, we're hosting this event. Um, I really love to see you there. And just things like that, personal outreach. Um, that's, like, one suggestion. <laughs> um, I think Olivia, for like smaller clubs in like general, like um, really like this goes back to interclubbing. Like right now is like the best time to interclub. Um, so like interclub with like a club that is doing events, or um, you could collaborate with them to have their events on like your calendar. Um, and maybe like eventually like your club members will start going out more. Um, but also like what Andy said, like I think the best way to for retention is personally DMing general members to come out to events um, and like advertising on your personal social media accounts. Um, so I know like a lot of key clubbers advertise on their um, Instagram stories, which has like actually helped a lot. Um, yeah, uh, another question for those having a completely online fall semester, uh, do you have tips for future recruitment in the online setting? Um, so currently my committee is actually working on something related to this right now. Uh, we're trying to get it out obviously like as fast as we can because it's, it's a little urgent. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things that I would say is, uh, aside from obviously things that we mentioned with like personal outreach, um, if your campus is doing some kind of like, um, like I guess a quote unquote involvement fair with uh, like through like a video platform, um, I would highly, highly suggest taking advantage of that. I know like UCR is like having clubs um, send in videos of like what their club is about and um, I think those videos are being sent to like all the incoming like first years and stuff. Um, that's one thing that you can do. Um, and then I think also like if you can, I also highly recommend highly recommend utilizing like your Qantas family relations with the key clubbers and key wins. Um, so like if you know if you already have like at least decent relationships with the key clubbers there, um, then talking to them and seeing like hey like you interested in joining Circle K <laughs> um, would probably be effective, um, for at least from what I've seen, like a lot of key clubbers will transition over to Circle K if, you know, you really sell it well, um, have a really good pitch. And then Olivia, do you have anything else to add? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm actually like wondering this too. Um, Andy basically answered like what like we were thinking. Um, we were thinking of like, cause I think for Long Beach, we're gonna have like, it's gonna be like office hours type. So uh, like, I don't feel like we're gonna get that much members cause it's more like them taking initiative to go do these office hours. Um, but we're hoping that we could have like a recruitment video ready. Um, think also like I think it would be nice if I saw like Sac State or something they had like their virtual scrapbook um so like make sure that your website is ready too just to have like um, because everything's gonna be online so social media is like more important right now um yeah um I would also say like maybe something that you can do is like creating like a short TikTok or like a short Instagram video um that you can share with the key clubbers um, and have them advertise it as well. Um, more likely than not, their ability to advertise to their members is gonna be a lot more effective than um, us advertising to their members, just because obviously, you know, they, they're friends <laughs> and they know each other. Um, so that's another su suggestion. But yeah, uh, my committee is working on something that will be a little more in depth with that. So um, I would say be on the lookout for it and we'll try to get back to it as soon as we can. We're actually like trying to start from like the summer like trying to integrate people into our club starting from the summer um so just like having them join our discord and like hopefully maybe they'll start like um talking to our members as much um more as well as like the temporary family system that we have we're hoping to like if we can um, um including like the transfers and like new members that are like interested in circle k um to just like get them to like know our members more and hopefully that will help with like retaining them in the fall yeah, a uh, question from Kylie. Uh, I have a question for Olivia. What's this uh, temporary like family system that you guys have going on over the summer? Um, it's basically the same as like our typical family system that we have like over the school year. Um, but because of like quarantine and everything, we were thinking of ways to get our members more um, to just retain our members better. And I feel like the best way to retain your members is through the family system. Um, Cause that's mostly where um, we contact all our members is through like the group chat. That's where we know like everyone is like all of our dues paid members are there. Um, so for our summer family system, it's only going to be like a two month thing. Um, Cause we also like, so we were thinking about either starting families early or just having a temporary one in the summer. Um, but we decided on starting a temporary one because uh, we also didn't want it to get like too clicky for like when the new members come in in the fall. Um, so we decided to just like have it for like two months until like August when school starts. And then um, and then when school starts, we'll have like a different like our regular family system. So just like a more simplified system just to get our members to hopefully be more involved and eventually like come out to more events. And yeah. Steve? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. Um, and are you guys doing like family socials like over these two months or? Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. All right. Uh, Steve? Um, Steve asks regarding the webinar form, does it matter what topic will? the webinar be about. Um, <clears throat> usually when it comes to like webinar topics, we try to have it be, I guess like, um, I guess like, applicable for like everyone. Uh, and so, you know, I, I'm kind of joking with like the like, calculus thing, but um, we do want to try to diversify and, and provide as many um, different topics and things that people can share about as much as we can. Um, and so, uh, if you do have anything like you would want to talk about, then uh, again, just kind of fill out the form and then uh, me and my committee will kind of figure out like how we can work with you to make it as um, as generalizable as it can be. <clears throat> yeah, because I think you have to remember that for a district webinar, it's you're appealing to how many members do we have like a thousand. <laughs> Uh, There's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so like 600 plus members um, compared to like a club webinar where you have more creative freedom to do whatever you want. Um, yeah. yeah. Are there any other questions? 
Uh, there's one about um, ways to increase involvement aside from marketing. Um, so in terms of like increasing involvement aside from just like posting like, like your social media and like you know up in your marketing game, um, which I would say also is probably going to be the most effective way. Um, but <clears throat> some other ways you can do again mentioned a million times, but um, personal outreach, uh, also looking into like what kind of events you're hosting. If you know, you're noticing like a trend with things getting kind of repetitive and um, people not really attending as much, then I would probably talk to your board and figure out like, uh, why is it that people are attending less? Um, what can we do to kind of tackle this um, and make it so that our events are more fresh and more interesting for people to attend? Um, and also utilizing like different um, communication platforms. Um, Zoom is great at everything, but you know, it gets, it gets a little tiring. It's not as fun as like other platforms like Discord where like you can have a timeout channel and you can throw people into like a channel with like interesting sounds and stuff. Um, but yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah, I think definitely with the being more active thing, definitely like looking at what other clubs do and seeing like what works and what doesn't, um, as well as having that conversation with your board. Because um, this is not like something that you could figure out as like one lone like individual. Um, definitely like discussion as a board will definitely help with like getting different ideas as well as the survey feedback forms that we mentioned. Yeah. All right, if there are no more questions, um, this is our contact information, um, and that does conclude our webinar. So thank you all for coming. Uh, if you have any further questions or if you need any more advice or guidance, uh, feel free to contact me and my committee. Um, obviously, only my contact information is there. Um, and this presentation will be uploaded onto the event page, um, as well as um, all the links that were included in here, including like the webinar um, interest form and uh the resources uh and also uh sign-in should already have been done when you came into the zoom link so uh that should already be taken care of and i'll be sending out the uh list of attendees to your secretaries uh, or just kidding ryan <laughs> to our district secretary and if you have any questions for olivia uh, her contact information is there as well yeah all right